and now we will uh, be going on or we'll continue with um, the Q&A panel so uh, uh, so bin I'll just ask you the question and uh, if you see it suitable you can uh, answer as you see fit inshallah okay so uh, the first uh, the question, first question we, have we have here, here uh, is what are the prohibitions of masturbation and the solutions uh, to prevent it? Jazakumullah khair. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah, wa salam. So masturbation, uh, I, I remember back in the days, in, in early 90s, we used to ask this question to the, uh, not the mashayikh, but there was uh, like uh, uh, brothers who are elder than us in the masjid, who will be like considered to be role models in the in the, in the the area. So we we'll go and ask them these questions like, is masturbation halal, is it haram? So some people will say, it is halal if it prevents you from falling into uh, the major sin, uh, the major sin of zina. So that I remember that vividly because actually, as youngsters at that time, we used to take this as a justification to go and masturbate. And if we, if we discuss it amongst ourselves, we say, "Hey, the sheikh said so. It's halal if it prevents you from masturbation." As I uh, grew and I got into the uh, the, the research of addiction, I realized that any addiction, as I mentioned earlier, escalates. It does not remain at one level. You will start now, or maybe you are already on pornography and masturbation for quite some times. And subhanAllah, even if you quit porn, sometimes people will get stuck with masturbation and that will become their addiction. But guess what? Addiction escalates. It will never remain at one level. It will never remain as a masturbation you know what is the next level will be acting out acting out all these flashbacks you need now a real life partner and zina will be the next level so if if masturbation could lead to zina even with the smallest with the smallest percentage in mind uh, then i consider i take that opinion which says it's completely prohibited uh, the the surah uh, surah al-mu'minun uh, describe the qualities of true believers who will be successful on the day of judgment, uh, those who consistently pray, those who uh, uh, focus in their salah, those who pay their zakah, and so on and so forth. And part of the uh, of the surah says, and those who safeguard their, their private parts. Illa Except with their lawful spouses. As Sheikh Allah said was uh, talking about, you know, being together in your bedroom with your wife and husband, these things are lawful for, for one another, for you and your husband. And we will not talk about, you know, what your right hand possessed now, because we don't have that now, but spouses, your wife, your husband. The, the verse continues. So who, whoever seek sexual pleasure from any other means other than what we just discussed, other than your spouses, those are the transgressors. Now you are transgressing against Allah, the bounds of Allah, the boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be very, very vigilant. So from that angle, I consider masturbation to be prohibited. How to get rid of the uh, addiction to masturbation is similar, but it's more difficult because masturbation usually um, does not require a device, that does not require internet, um, in the toilets, in the bathroom, anywhere. It's very difficult. Again, uh, when you confess that addiction to someone that you trust, uh, especially person with you in your, in your, within your home, like a wife, uh, if you are a if you are a student or if, uh, if you are a minor, you tell your father, tell your mom, and parents, please take these things lightly and uh, and compose yourself when you hear those shocking uh, information from your children because you didn't expect that these things are coming, so you're not prepared on how to deal with it. So now it's time to educate yourself and learn how to guide your children. I advise you uh, to tune in on on puberty program of Sheikh Yahya. Mashallah, I love the idea of teaching young children these issues at uh, at a very, very young age. So it's, it's highly encouraged. So learn from that. But at the same time, if you are the one addicted to masturbation, tell somebody, preferably within your home, so that when you enter to the toilet, the bathroom, at least somebody will come and knock your door. Are you right? Are you good? At least disrupt you if you are about to do something haram. And that would hopefully remind you to uh, leave uh, quickly and, and finish your business without relapsing. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, 
Um, before we get to the next question, I'd just like to remind everyone that um, the questions are open and it's also anonymous. So uh, just go on to abuhurera.org slash questions and um, you can ask your question there or on, under the YouTube uh, live stream, there's a question uh, section there too. Okay, Sheikh, the next question says, uh, if someone masturbates one or two times a day and ejac ejaculates each time, can he still pray or perform or must perform ghusl first? Yeah, we, we know that if, if orgasm take place, whether through masturbation or through um, uh, sexual intercourse, uh, definitely a complete ghusl would be required. Whether you did that once or twice or thrice, uh, every time you have that climax, then a complete ghusl is required. And of course, uh, in, in the case of masturbation, I would say repentance even on the top of that. So before even praying the compulsory prayer, you have to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a commitment that you do your best never to go back to that sin again. Uh, you know, uh, regret what you've done in your heart and seek istighfar. And while you're praying, uh, while you're prostrating, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to assist you and to help you with these uh, compulsive actions. Uh, the next question says, um, how does one help their spouse if they're a porn addict? And then it mentions in brackets, it impacts the marriage. You're breaking up. Can, can you repeat the question? How does, how does someone, someone help their, help spouse, their spouse if they're if a they're porn, porn addict? addict? Uh, it uh, impacts the marriage. Okay. Uh, I have written a booklet, inshallah. Please, uh, please uh, yani remind me, brother, uh, to, to share it with you so that you can share it with the people of, uh, you know, your circle, like at Abu Huraira mm -hmm. Center. It says uh, 10 indications your husband is addicted to pornography. Uh, so I, I'm just educating the sisters here on uh, on signs that maybe they can observe uh, in the life of their husband so that it, it can open that conversation. Are you all right? Uh, you know, I heard about addiction. So it's not like go and confront your husband. Hey, you're addicted to pornography because Sheikh Wai wrote a book saying this. It's just indications that may help sisters in particular to open up the conversation. And if you find that your husband is addicted to pornography, then you start uh, uh, helping him in, in the way that I will inshallah briefly dis uh, discuss in a while. Also, another book before I forget, it's very essential for sisters to help their husbands to cope with porn addiction. It says, I love you or love you, hate the porn. Love you, hate the porn is written by a wife who have discovered uh, her um, husband's addiction to pornography and as a result she developed those skills to help him. So one of the things to help your husband uh, with with porn addiction is number one, number one is to re-establish the trust. If you live if you lived with your with with your husband with this eye of doubts all the time, then that that annoyance, the annoyance associated with the men, I'm talking now from the psychology of men, uh, that 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 mode of being irritated because I'm always, even if I'm not doing wrong, I'm always under the spot. I'm always being doubted. That could be a trigger for relapses. That could be a trigger for going out and hunt for prostitutions or dirty massage houses and all that. Why? We get a lot of men who are saying that because she nags me, Sheikh. You know, I already confessed my addiction to her, but she keep on telling me, where have you been? What are you doing? Oh, you're doing this. Have you done this again? Why are this? You, you shouldn't be like, you know, a, a police hunter or a haram hunter or um, uh, you, you shouldn't police your husband, rather offer the necessary support. From time to time, come and tell him, like, if you have the urges, if you have th these tensions, please come and reach out. Don't be shy. I would leave everything and be for you. And that's also something for the sisters to be mindful of, like, uh, try as much as you can. I know that it's something sometimes very hard when you handle the, the household and the children. All that's very difficult to even on the top of that be ready for your husband's sexual desire. But it's always advisable to be as ready as possible, uh, so that if you at least in the initial stage uh, stage of recovery to offer that necessary support, so he don't inshallah uh, run back and do something else. So compassion, trust, and be as much as, as possible ready for uh, the intercourse with your husband. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Uh, the next question says... How Sorry, I heard Sheikh Kamil would be with us uh, in the question answer, so 
I wish that he can also يعني, share his insights if he's still in the room. Okay, with the will uh, we'll give him at the end, inshallah. Okay, maybe one or two questions because these, these, these questions, these questions are, more, are more I would say in your field, uh, Sheikh. Okay, uh, our next question is How does one keep their daughters away from pornography as it has been so, uh, so normalized within schools and university, etc.? Uh, by by opening up the conversation and education uh, in the house around pornography addiction and its harms. The more they know that it is harmful, the higher the resistance would be in their brains. Like their brains will receive those signals that pornography is harmful. So every time they will fall or every time the conversation will take place between them and their other classmates, they will have the resistance will be stronger. We don't say that they will not see it. We don't say that they will never have access to it because Scholars now believe that it's not about whether my child will have access to pornography or not. It's just about time. It's just about, uh, you know, when will they actually have access. But uh, we have to prepare them for this moment. That If they see it, be careful because the next moment, addiction will arise, sexual dysfunction will happen, uh, relationship problems, divorce will happen, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, lack of self-esteem, you know, uh, self-confidence, self, uh, uh control or focus when you educate them about all the problems that the pornography could lead to the resistance system will be empowered and will be strengthened so i believe in education talking to children about the harmful impact of pornography that's why at that way academy we teach also how to language this kind of education to different age groups so we have the age appropriate approach uh, hopefully inshallah the masjid can allow us to have that parenting workshop and then educators workshop and then we can now reach to the youth and the youngsters in the community bring them over and on ground talk to them about porn addiction without actually mentioning the word uh, porn so just to set the tone and to educate them appropriately so i believe in that uh, approach because no matter how many filters you have at home no matter how many restrictions you have around screen time and so on still they have classmates that they can share stuff with they still have some social media that maybe you have no clue that they have or been using because they're using different names and so on so education 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 conversation con allowing anything to be discussed in the house no taboo issues whatever happens it happened let's discuss it decently and nicely and that will build the trust so if something happened outside a predator or somebody approach your daughter you will be the first one uh, she will run to and and tell tell them to to offer support and help uh, we'll give you this question and then inshallah we'll we'll have some questions for sheikh kamen inshallah uh, this question, uh, this question is, is uh, it says, would you advise young brothers to avoid marriage until they heal this addiction? And uh, how would they know they're ready, they're ready for marriage? For marriage. <laughs> <laughs> if you're able to marry, get married. If you have all the means to get married, and again, this is a message for parents. Make marriage easy, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, I get the zina that the, 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 the majority of cases in, of zina in our community, in our Muslim community, I believe a lot of the share, you know, people who would share the sin are parents. That, that's my take on this. Whether you consider this um, uh, wrong or right, we can discuss that and debate this. But I believe that parents will share much of the zina being committed by the youngsters today because they have made marriages absolutely ridiculously difficult. And zina is absolutely easy. Pornography is absolutely free. Free. So when the haram becomes prevalent and super easy and super accessible and cheap, and marriage, the halal, the lawful, becomes so difficult. And people, like, you know, when they think about marriage, they think about money. They think about, you know, job. They think about big houses, cars, and stuff like that. But parents can assist and can help their youngsters to get married as soon as possible, inshallah ta'ala. And that will be half you know, 50% of the solution, not all. So marriages does not solve the addiction part, but it helps in great ways to start the progress or to start the process of recovery. So do I encourage people who are addicted to get married? Absolutely, yes. 
how do you know if you're ready? As I mentioned, like, you know, for, for every society, readiness is different. Um, uh, you know, I don't want to talk about myself, but when I got married, uh, I didn't have a wedding. I had just a simple dinner. When I got married, I didn't have a house. I just had a rented place. I rented place, small place. When I when I moved to Hong Kong City, me and my wife, we were living uh, on, on on in a very small room. That everything that we need in the house was in one room: the kitchen, the, the toilet, the bed. Everything is one room. When we had two children, we lived on a rooftop. Again, similarly, in a room that has everything in it because we couldn't afford the uh, massive rent in Hong Kong City. And we lived happily and we didn't complain. So the point is, are you ready? It's up to you. How do you want to marry? Do you want to marry because your cousin have a wedding in Sheraton and this massive? Uh, and that's, that's, that's the standard now. So as a result, you can't get married because your parents wouldn't accept unless you have a wedding similar to your cousin and similar to this and that. This is the problem in our society. We made marriages very, very difficult. So I can't just talk on behalf of the addicts, brothers or sisters, who are youngsters uh, in, in our community. I have to include parents here to make things easy for them. Please, I beg you, get them married as early as possible so that we can avoid uh, the, the amount of zina that's being committed by Ayatollah because of the sexual urges. So yes, I advise them to get married. Yes, I, I tell them to take that path because this is what the Prophet ﷺ advised us with. Uh, and he said that uh, whoever is able to get married financially, physically, and whatnot, let him get married. And he was talking al-shabab to young people. Because why? Why? Why marriage is important? The Prophet ﷺ also told us it helps us curb our desire, our sexual desire, and it helps us to also lower the gaze. Because what you what you'd be looking uh, uh, out for, you know, sexual uh, attention or tension is, is already right in front of you with, with your wife. But if you're addicted, the situation becomes more difficult. May Allah protect us all yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, this question is uh, for Sheikh Kamil. Uh, the question is, how can someone pur purify their soul or their heart after being addicted? Okay, bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd. Basically, when it comes to a sin that we commit, whether it be uh, watching pornography or committing zina or whatever it be the very first thing the very first step that you take is to turn to Allah in repentance this is the very first step and in order for your repentance to be correct and accepted by Allah it has to include first and foremost you stopping that sin right away so you can't be you know in involved and watching pornography and asking Allah for repentance you have to stop it immediately so you're done from it and you don't stop you don't continue in it the second thing is you have to have remorse and regret in your heart so you can't be enjoying within your within your heart you're, you're enjoying what you saw while you're asking Allah for repentance uh, that's not an acceptable repentance so it has to be remorse regret deep down from within your heart and the third uh, point regarding repentance and accepted repentance is that you have to make the the strong resolve and determination to never ever go back to that sin ever again and yes obviously with regards to uh, this addiction or any other addiction this uh, intention and determination to not go back to it it's something very difficult to 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 bring about especially when you've done it hundreds of times and every time you you ask Allah for repentance and then you know you end up going back in this cycle but don't ever give up on that intention don't ever give up on that intention when you're making tawbah to Allah because that intention right there is the key is the very key to purifying your heart because you've made this contract with Allah that, oh Allah, I am never going to go back to this ever again. If you end up going back to it without having the intention, that's a different story. But if you make the intention to never go back to it again, then this is the very first step. This is the very first step towards purifying your heart. Because now Allah knows. Allah knows that you're, you are serious, that you're honest with yourself. 
and you're honest with Allah. So now Allah will help you. The next step after that, once you've done your tawbah, is in order to, you know, leave that behind you. The the next step is to busy yourself, to busy yourself in a good deed. To busy yourself in a good deed. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Good deeds, they make bad deeds to go away. And so when you do a good deed, it causes the bad deed to go away. And, you know, there are so many different good deeds that you can do. Uh, you know, busy yourself in reciting the Qur'an. Uh, busy yourself in uh, praying Salatul Qiyam, Salatul Tahajjud, fasting. As Shaykh Wa'il mentioned, uh, you know, regarding this very topic, uh, fasting uh, is a good deed. It is an act of ibadah. Do it. Uh, and so many other good deeds that, you know, one should busy himself with. Because in the end of the day, in the end of the day, uh, shaitan comes to us. Shaitan comes to us when we are free and we are not doing anything. We are free, we're sitting around, not busying ourselves with anything. And that is the golden opportunity for shaitan to come to you. Because when you're not doing anything, that time needs to be filled. So if you do not fill it with something good, then shaitan will come and fill it with something with something bad. And so these are the steps that one should take towards towards uh, purifying his soul and cleaning his heart of that filth that he was involved in. And obviously, uh, the, the greatest uh, thing that one should not forget about, and that is turning to Allah, uh, uh, seeking his help, seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because in the end of the day, it is impossible for us to uh, to overcome any challenge except by Allah allowing us to overcome it. There is no challenge out there in the dunya, whether it be related to our deen or related to our dunya, except that the only one who allows us to overcome that challenge is none other than Allah. We on our own can't do anything. So turn to Allah for his help. Uh, the next question is I try to quit but um, I still fall back into sin and uh, I make dua for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, to forgive me but I don't see no uh, results and I'm losing faith what would be your advice? This brings us back to uh, what we spoke about in the lecture earlier today where uh, people who have this addiction they do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and we mentioned this very example as an example of how uh, this addiction leads people to shubuhat to doubts concerning their faith and so basically you know what I can advise such a person is as we mentioned not to give up that's the key here, not to give up. And so this is a constant battle that we are in. And don't forget, don't forget that you are in this battle. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you in this test. Don't look at others and think that, you know, others are not being tested with such a huge test that I am facing. But rather realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives every one of us a test based on our own circumstances so yes you may be seeing others not going through the same thing but that doesn't mean that they are not going through other tests that according to you are easy but according to them you know for their circumstance that test is 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 you know they're looking at you they're looking at you thinking that your test is easy and so a person regardless of the test that he's been put in by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he should always realize that it is a test from allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, do the people think that, you know, it, it will be sufficient for them to say, we believe in Allah, and then that's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will leave them without putting them through a fitna, without putting them to the test. And so, 
realize that this is a struggle, it is a fitna, it is a test that you need to continue with. And remember that in the end of the day, as long as you are constantly turning back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as you are constantly turning back to Allah, then this is a good sign. This is a good sign. Don't say, you know, I keep going back to it, and then I keep doing tawbah, I keep asking Allah for help, and then I go back to it, and you're in this cycle, and then you start to give up hope. No. As long as you are in this cycle, you are far better, a hundred times better, than the one who, you know, after a few attempts, he gives up. That's it, he gives up. And, you know, he, he thinks that's it. You know, I'm done with this. And so as long as you are continuously, you know, uh, battling through this, then you are, you are upon, you're, you're upon the right path. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to, you know, strengthen your resolve and uh, to keep you strong upon that path. I mean, I mean, you know, uh, this question also for Sheikh Kamil, it says, what's your, uh, what's your thoughts on saying, Wallahi, I'm not going to masturbate for a week. So basically an oath, is this haram? And is this a smart way of uh, worshipping? And also, is there a kafara for this? Uh, basically, when it comes to uh, making an oath to stay away from a sin, the scholars basically mention that uh, we're not supposed to make such oaths. And so an oath should only be for doing uh, a good deed. Uh, an oath should only be uh, for doing a good deed. So you make an oath that, you know, I'm going to, you know, give in sadaqah. You make an oath that you're going to do this, such and such good deed. When it comes to abandoning sins, we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to make an oath by Allah that, you know, if I uh, go back to this sin, then, you know, I'm going to fast, for example, uh, you know, 10 days, or I'm going to give this much in sadaqah. And so if a person does make such an oath, then he does have to, he does have to pay the kafara for that. So it means that he does have to, he does have to do what he made, you know, an oath by. But he should not do that in the future. He should not resort to doing that in the future, but rather he should take the other means to stop uh, that sin, the other permissible means that uh, are mentioned uh, in the Quran and in the Sunnah. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Um, this will be the last question for Sheikh Kamil, inshallah, and then we'll go to, we have, uh, I think, one or two more questions for Sheikh Wail. Uh, this question for Sheikh Kamil says, how to make your thoughts pure of women uh, who are haram for me since I'm married? Note, um, I started to lower my gaze and look away since the last two or three years, but I still need some advice and guidance. Definitely uh, lowering one's gaze is the is the first step. There's no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, that is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَغُضُّوا مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِمْ وَيَحْفَظُوا فُرُوجَهُمْ ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا يَصْنَعُونَ Say to the believing men that they should lower their gaze and protect their private parts, for that is pure for them. And Allah is well aware of what they do. So this is definitely the the, the, the very first step. And, you know, uh, what you're doing is the correct thing. Uh, and if, you, if you're if you saying that you've been doing this for the last two or three years, then alhamdulillah, you're, you're, what you're doing is, is good and you're upon the correct path. Uh, now, if you lower your gaze and still, you know, those thoughts are coming to your mind, uh, perhaps you know you you were addicted to pornography in the past, and that's why you know these thoughts are coming to you. Uh, then, uh, in the end of the day, you just have to constantly uh, struggle with your nafs because, in the end of the day, your thoughts are a product of the cravings of your nafs, and obviously shaitan as well. So, what you need to do is you need to continue to struggle against your nafs, do jihad with your nafs. So whenever you have those thoughts, 
whenever you have those thoughts ignore them you know stop uh, uh, persisting in those thoughts don't allow yourself to get carried away in those thoughts and also don't forget to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan because like I said uh, these are the two sources if you're having these thoughts without looking at women then where else are these thoughts coming from they're coming from your nafs that has those cravings of the past and they're coming from shaitan so you need to continue to struggle with your nafs and you need to seek refuge in Allah from shaitan. And when you say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم and you seek refuge in Allah from shaitan, uh, try your best to ponder over the meaning of what you're saying. Don't just say it without pondering over the meaning. You are saying, I seek refuge in Allah from shaitan who is the cursed. Who is shaitan? We know shaitan has so much power. But when you bring to mind who you're seeking refuge in, then this helps you to put things into perspective. You are seeking protection and help in none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is far more powerful than shaitan. And so when a person seeks refuge, let's say you know he's outside and it starts raining very heavily, he's going to look for shelter, right? Where is he going to look for uh, look for shelter under some flimsy weak place where you know the the, the rain is going to hit him no he's going to look for the strongest protection and so when you say a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim keep that in mind that you are seeking protection in the strongest protection there is no greater protection and refuge than the refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so when you have that conviction in your heart that you know uh, it is Allah who's going to protect me from shaitan, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you for your iman in him and your trust in him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will reward you by actually keeping shaitan away from you. So these are the two things you need to do uh, whenever you have these thoughts. Obviously as well, don't forget, uh, try to busy yourself, busy yourself whenever you have these thoughts with the remembrance of Allah. With the remembrance of Allah. Uh, and so when you remember Allah with your heart and your tongue then this ke keeps away all evil thoughts be it in ta'ala You know, inshallah, yeah, inshallah, we'll, we'll go, go back to, uh, to Sheikh Wail. Uh, we have some questions uh, that came in for him, inshallah. Uh, one of the questions uh, that says, "How do I know when I have when I've recovered from uh, this addiction, and what are some of the signs?" Uh, so, as I said earlier, uh, according to some experts in the field, they said if you maintain sobriety for about one year without pornography, without masturbation, then we can tell you, congratulations, you have recovered. However, that doesn't mean that the addiction had disappeared from your brain. It means that you have to maintain the lifestyle that had led to your sobriety. Uh, some people, they could recover faster than others. Some people would take longer than that. So it's really not that simple to answer. But I would say if you maintain sobriety for eight months to a year, without porn, without masturbation, and maintain those uh, lifestyle in uh, place, like the environment is always conducive to learning, conducive to sobriety, conducive to iman-driven activities. You have system in place, do's and don'ts, boundaries, uh, not mingling with the opposite gender unnecessarily, all these things in place for a year plus, then alhamdulillah, we can say that you have uh, exited that cycle. But at any given time, be careful, addiction could kick in again and you can relapse just like that and we have people who actually maintain sobriety for three years and they came back why because they have violated their own uh, policies and structure that they put in place which had led them to sobriety so you have to be very careful when you break free from porn addiction or when you decide to break free from porn addiction it is a decision for life not for a week not for two not for a month so you have to do what it takes to protect yourself for the life to come until you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Um, this will be our last or the second to last question, depending on how much we have. Uh, this question says, I used to masturbate when young, and uh, now I'm afraid of premature ejaculation. What would be your advice? Yeah, so my advice would be, again, quit pornography, quit masturbation, quit any inappropriate TV shows, movies of any you know, sort, because those movies always have scenes that can be a trigger for you to go back to your uh, old habits. So premature ejaculation uh, can be uh, reversed. That situation can be reversed in your favor if you maintain sobriety. So on the long run, your brain, again, will learn that this is something abhorred, that this is something that you don't, don't desire anymore. And as a result, you will become natural when you're intimate, inshallah ta'ala, with your uh, spouse. It may, again, take time. Yani we have Gabe Dean, uh, one of the people who were impacted by uh, erectile dysfunction, by not being able to uh, having a climax with his partner. And uh, and he's the one who started Reboot Nations. You can look it up, look it up uh, on the internet. He mentioned that it took him nine months to reverse the situation back into his favor before he had a proper uh, sexual intimacy with his partner. So it may take a long time. So you have to bear with patience and you have to strive hard, as Sheikh Kamil mentioned. It's, it's an ongoing battle. So you have to strive very, very hard to uh, cleanse your eyes. As a result, your brain will be cleansed. And as a result, your heart will be purified. And as a result, your physical being, your, your bodies will react to these changes. So it, it's a slow process, but again, it's worth the attempt. So it may take time to recover from erectile dysfunction. It may take time to recover from premature ejaculation. It may even uh, uh, take a while to recover from not having orgasm at all. There are people who also suffer from not being able to reach to climax during sexual intimacy. All these things will be reversed Insha'Allah Ta'ala, as you uh, uh, keep keep your eyes away from these filth and keep your body clean from any undesirable uh, sexual activity. Okay, Jazakallah uh, Khair. Uh, this will be our second to last question. We just got, we just got another one. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. All right. No problem. I'm here. Okay. Sorry. Okay, Inshallah. Just tell Just me tell if you're, me if you're, you're tired. tired. We can, uh, you can cut it. You can no, cut no, it. No, I'm good, inshallah. Okay. okay. Uh, this, question uh, this question says, says what, really what really happens to our body when we stop masturbating? Stop masturbating? Um, for example, does our mind become more cleaner or clearer? Uh, and does our spirit become better? Or our soul Gosh. become better? Again, it's complicated. Uh, in the beginning, uh, it's, it's withdrawal symptoms that can be very annoying and can be very draining. Uh, brain fog is one of the uh, symptoms that many people say uh, they experience when they quit masturbation or quit pornography and both of them, uh, uh, you know, at one go. So they feel like, you know, they're, they're lacking uh, of focus at certain time. Sometimes people experience physical pain in their stomach, lower uh, stomach. Some people, they experience laziness, like uh, lacking of energy and all that. So all these things are symptoms of recovery when you quit for a period of time. But as you progress with your recovery, and as you really strive hard, inshallah ta'ala, some people within two to three months, they regain their mental clarity. So this is now the outcome of not having these things in life. Mental clarity. Allahu Akbar. One of the things that the Sharia came to protect is your intellect. So you would be sharp. You would start getting into, uh, you know, understanding certain concepts that you used to feel uh, or used to experience difficulties grasping. You would start uh, focusing faster. You would start memorizing the Quran. Some people, they, they, they forgot the Quran, my brothers and sisters. Wallahi, they forgot the entire Quran memorization as a result of this uh, addictive behavior. So mental clarity is the first thing that's observed uh, as per our experience and, and feedback from people who are addicted. They say that they started feeling focused uh, much more. And, and slowly, slowly, inshallah ta'ala, those who are married, they will experience a uh, longer time with their spouse during, you know, sexual intimacy and uh, less sensitivity in, in, in those areas as opposed to uh, uh, when they were addicted and heavily addicted to pornography. So, yeah, slowly, slowly. And of course, spiritually, you will grow. When these images fade away, they will not be erased. And we don't have medicine or anything to erase those flashbacks that 
the previous questioner uh, talked about and, and, and viewing women in his brain and whatnot. Unfortunately, uh, the damage is done. But what we can do, inshallah ta'ala, by observing, lowering the gaze and this brilliant advice, subhanAllah, which subhanAllah, if you look into on, to, uh, on the internet today, there is there are two websites. One is based, uh, I think it's a Jewish-based website. It's called Protect Your Gaze. Not purify your gaze of Brother Ziyad Ramadan, who's a Muslim, alhamdulillah, but there is protect your gaze or guard your gaze, something like that. And the non-Muslim communities are talking about the importance of lowering the gaze. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ had talked about it long, long time ago, more than 1,400 years back. The Quran talked about it more than 1,400 years back because, again, what you look at is immediately stored in your brain. But anyway, the damage is done. And what we can do is to weaken those... Uh, images by not looking at that which is haram. So slowly, slowly they will be there, but they will not be as effective or uh, uh, negatively as, as as they are now. So as you progress, inshallah, mental clarity and spiritual growth will be uh, really experienced. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, the next or the final question is, what are some practical steps we can take after this conference to protect ourselves and as a parent to protect our children uh, from uh, these uh, harms mentioned. Bismillah. Uh, as parents, inshallah ta'ala, gather your children, have a nice, nice meeting, uh, conversational meeting, not a dictatorship kind of, uh, from now on, guys, this number one. No, 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 please. That doesn't work with this generation anymore. It will never work with this generation. A conversational communication and educational meeting with your children. Tell them, listen, I... I got to know that there are a lot of harms on the internet. What do you think we can do to protect our family? It's all about us. It's not about them. It's not about distrusting what they do. It's about not, it's about distrusting people online that you don't know. It's, it's from that angle you discuss with them. Listen, what do you think about installing some softwares to protect our families? What do you think of minimizing screen time? Uh, maybe we have one hour during weekend, 30 minutes, weekdays, or whatever works for your family members. What about all of us, including parents, dropping our cell phones and our devices in the living room and never take it anymore into our bedrooms? When your children now see you doing the same, practicing the same, it becomes part, part, part of the culture of that home. So everyone become accustomed to that culture. It takes it takes few days. Before you know it, it becomes normal practice that we have a spot, like in my home, we have a spot called uh, devices parking lot. We park our devices after 8 p.m., 9 p.m., you know, we drop it in the basket. And I seek permission from my children to respond to certain calls and certain messages it, because I, 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 we live in Australia, my, my, my in-laws are in Philippines, my, my own families are in Egypt, so sometimes time difference is very difficult. So, but when, when we wanted to violate or we, when we want exceptions, we seek permission from our children. When you build that respect, then alhamdulillah, things become more uh, easier to manage. And, 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 and by the way, uh, your children will make mistakes your children will do the wrong. And you as parents, my brothers and sisters, now I'm addressing parents in particular, your job as a parent is to clean up the mess of your children. That's one of your role as a parent. Unfortunately, if, you, if you're parents, here's the bad news. Your job is to clean up the mess. They are very curious creatures, subhanAllah, very curious. They will, they will, they will do a lot of wrong out of curiosity, not intentionally. So most of the mistakes are not intentional. They just, out of curiosity, they want to learn new things. That's how they were designed, subhanAllah. Your job now, when they fall, when they are trapped, when they make mistakes, come here, no problem. No one is going to scold you or beat you up or uh, just let us, let us sort out the problem. When you build that trust, when things happen, they will have no other ways, other uh, resources but you to seek education and guidance. So this is one of the practical tips. The quickest uh, uh, practical tips that you do is to establish uh, a conversation with your children and tell them that, listen, what do you think? There is a contract, inshallah, if we continue this conversation, there are a lot of parenting tips that we can uh, share. There is a contract online. 
where you can have uh, with your children on devices, uh, you know, screen time, usage of internet. And it's two ways. It's not only for children, it's also for the parents. Part of the contract is for the parents. Uh, pay attention when your children come and talk to you and tell you, dad, I want to talk to you about something. If, you, if your child saw you holding the phone and you're, you're, you're not paying attention to them, they will go and talk to their online friends. And many a times they talk to the wrong people. So you have to pay attention. So there are a lot to discuss. Time is not sufficient, unfortunately, but these are the quickest tips you can start, inshallah. And for those who are addicted, the quickest, shortest cut you can do today, inshallah, is to reach us out, to reach the AWARE Academy, inshallah. My email is info at aware.academy.com.au. Info at aware.academy.com.au. You can ask for tips and, and tricks. You can ask for ebooks that we give for free, or you can ask for paid programs where you can commit to your, you know, uh, commit to yourself for one month to get some, you know, uh, one on one uh, coaching, uh, you know. Uh, programs where you can inshallah to start at least the recovery journey uh, all this available at um, you know our our academy so reach us out info at aweracademy.com.au and inshallah ta'ala we will do our very best to help you inshallah jazakumullah khair Uh, this comes to our end, inshallah, with uh, Sheikh Wail jazakumullah khair you know we had a lot of questions but alhamdulillah the audience was uh, was very curious, alhamdulillah. Uh, you can ask the questions via email, inshallah. So uh, even though we finished the time, subhanAllah, it was uh, it was the first step, I believe, Abu Huraira Center, inshallah, could arrange similar events in the future. Yeah. And we can accommodate even more audience from different parts of the world. Uh, but those who still have questions, inshallah, ta'ala, alhamdulillah, you have blessed mashayikh in Canada. Uh, but if, if you want something specific about porn addiction, recovery, the brain science behind the issue, my books and, and, and the like, you can email me inshallah at info at aweracademy.com.au and inshallah ta'ala we usually respond quickly inshallah. Inshallah. Allah. 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 Well, yeah, uh, just one just second, one second inshallah, inshallah we'll have a closing remark. remark. By, uh, the general manager of uh, Abu Hurairah, Hassan, Hassan Ibrahim, Ibrahim, Ibrahim and uh, inshallah, inshallah after, after that we'll conclude our session. Sure. So now, so now inshallah, Hassan uh, uh, Ibrahim will come. Uh, the general, uh, general manager of Urera. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, how are you? Allah khair. I can't see you, Sheikh. Where's your camera? Uh, okay, actually, you can, you can see, see me now, now don't worry. Now, now, you, can now you can see me, right? Wow. Barakallah. First, first and foremost, foremost uh, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this uh, providing, uh, providing us to have you as a host and to complete this program. Uh, alhamdulillah, this was a really a, uh, a good step to address the topic. It's a topic that we wanted to address for quite some time. But as, but as always, we did address it from the Islamic perspective, from the halal and the haram part. But to have somebody uh, like Sheikh Wail, who uh, put an intensive research and became an, uh, a mutakhassis or specialized in the topic, it was a good opportunity to have. And Suna, one of the young brothers uh, who actually want to thank as well, uh, Hamza, who was one of the youth who grew up in the masjid, he will, came with the idea and approached me. With the proposal uh, with Sheikh uh, which, uh, which is to put together this whole program, program and they were the guys, were the guys behind, behind the scenes, scenes so connecting, connecting with all the shiuk and preparing, preparing. It's, good it's good to see the next, the next gen, gen taking, taking over inshallah uh, so, so alhamdulillah it was, was a successful program, program and, and i see a lot of young guys, guys benefiting from it inshallah especially as the videos go more and more online and we, really and we really thank you, thank you and absolutely, and absolutely definitely, this is, this is not going to be the last time, time inshallah to together. work together we will definitely tap into your expertise in different angles and different areas and hopefully when this uh, uh, COVID-19 issues goes away you will come and see us in Abu Rayla and visit us and host you inshallah Barakallah fi. which city are you from Sheikh in uh, Sydney? Perth uh, with, my, with, my, my, with my great brother friend my Habibi Yahya Ibrahim 
Langford College, Islamic yeah, College, yeah. and I'm in Australian Islamic College. Uh, he's our, he's our, 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 our Canadian rap over, over there, there, you know. He's, uh, he's, uh, he has a special, a special place in Abu Raya, Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim. Egyptian brother. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Well, and, and for those, for those who, who might, might not know, know. used to live in Egypt and find out we lived in the same neighborhood in Alexandria with Sheikh Wael, you know. This is where I, he, I lived in the same neighborhood that he lived in <laughs> back in the day. But Alhamdulillah, though, uh, this is what I want to thank you and thank Sheikh Yahya Ibrahim, Sheikh Ala Sayyid, and Sheikh Kamil Ahmed want for this amazing program, inshallah. There will be more and more to come, inshallah. We, our next program will be December conference, inshallah, that we are our annual uh, conference in the lie over the holidays. You will be hearing more uh, information about it soon, inshallah. But Sheikh Wael, inshallah, jazakallah khair for the time. And I, I'm telling you, you're the most professional setup, the media guys, and I, I love your setup. It's an amazing setup. This is where every sheikh should have in their home, especially at 2020 after COVID. This kind of amazing setup. It makes our life easy in the media department, you know. You know. Barakallah fiq, Habibi. Barakallah khair. Barakallah fiqum. Inshallah, we see each other again. Barakallah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.